Nigerians find a way out around Twitter, despite the social medium's suspension by the federal government. Now the government wants to license social media. Find out how that could play out and what it means for you. The courts remain shut across the country. The Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria says it's waiting on state governments to endorse an agreement before its members can get back to work. And insecurity continues in many parts of Nigeria. 88 killed over the weekend in Kebi State, no fewer than 20 killed in Igongon in Oyo State, and multiple reports of road robberies in Lagos. Hello and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. Good morning and thanks for joining us. It's a new Monday morning and we're excited about the new week. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. We hope you had a great weekend and you're ready, of course, uh, for the rest of the week. Good morning, Aneta. Good morning. Um, going straight into it with our top trending stories, you know, just give the brief there, talking about the state, the rising state of insecurity in the country. 80 killed, another 20 in another part of the country. That's about 100 people who died over the weekend. They, they woke up on a Monday morning like this just last week, pumped and excited for what the month holds, and then by the weekend, they're dead. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's um, just yeah, terrible. And, you know, you would also quickly, you know, note that these are official figures. It could be more, you know, than these numbers. Sure. Um, and so, you know, I will start by, you know, asking about, you know, where our humanity has gone as a country. If... You know, and I've said this so many times that we hear these stories and we go to work the next morning like it's nothing. You know, it, it really just sounds like, um, you know, the woman selling Nakara didn't come out yesterday and everyone just said, okay, no, well, I should come out on Tuesday. It's, it, it makes no sense that we can have these figures, we can have these numbers um, of dead people on a weekend and we just, you know, go to work, you know, like everything is normal in the country. It is absolutely not normal. This is, this is not a normal country anymore. It is insane that these things are happening and we have accepted it somehow, some way, not necessarily, um, you know, with our words, but we've, act we've accepted it with our actions as a country as normal. Mm. And who is responsible for the lives and security of the, you know, Nigerian citizens, the president, the state governors, where are they? Where are they in, in a time like this? Does the National Assembly care that 88 Nigerians were wiped away over the weekend? They're going to be at work again this morning to deliberate and give, you know, moments of silence, or minutes of silence for, you know, these persons. And then, you know, go back to their legislative duties like it is normal, it's like clockwork. So who exactly cares that 88 Nigerians, 20 by oh Igongong, gone, like I saw that video over the weekend um, and uh, WhatsApp, and, and it, it, it was shocking that there is this level of... of of insanity going on in Nigeria and we just continue with our daily activities. We just go to work, you know, and, and act like it's nothing. Obviously, yes, they say life goes on. Nobody's going to, you know, pause their lives because, you know, an incident happened someplace or the other. But 88 Nigerians, 100 Nigerian lives were taken over the weekend in the most gruesome way. And this oh is God. not a country with natural disasters. I mean, this, take a, this take a look at what, what's showing on yes. your screen. Those, that, that's basically, as a, as a vehicle, a truck burning. You know, communities ravaged. Yeah. So your state governor, Shane Makinde, has been, you know, pouring condolences. Well, how much can that do? What steps is he taking to make sure that no other person becomes casualty of whatever attack? Some yeah. people have begun to name other ethnic groups to say they're responsible, but these are the ethnic colorations that we do not need at this time. I mean, just well, take a look at the level of this damage. This is something that is enough for a state of emergency. Well, and know, when we talk about state of emergencies, um, we're not just talking about a declaration that we're just here and everybody moves on as though nothing has happened. We need urgent action. I mean, what if what if this was me? What if this was my sister, my brother, in all your state? Who was who was a victim of this in Kebi? It's, it's a disaster. Ethnic colorations or not, truth is truth. You know, whether you you know any other person tries to deny truth, you know, because of the dangers of truth, it is still the truth. So yes, there has to be investigations into you know whoever it is that is responsible for mm -hmm. for these murders and these killings, including the eighty eight people who died in Kebi. Um, and then we can then decide if there has if there's any ethnic colorations to all of it or not. So regardless of what anyone says, the truth is the truth. 
um, I've seen a few times where people say, oh, you know, you need to be careful with the way you put it out so it doesn't create a bigger uh, problem, it doesn't create a bigger challenge um, with the, like you've said, ethnic colorations. But truth is truth. Whether, you know, uh, we accept it or not, there needs to be investigation so we can know if this truly has ethnic yes. origins or not, or these are just miscreants and hoodlums and bandits, like they've been called, killing people for their own personal reasons. And you don't hear when these things happen that anything was stolen. You don't hear that these are armed robberies that, of course, you know, eventually turned fatal, that people died as a result of, you know, other people. No, but nothing is stolen in all these cases. 88 people were killed in Kebi. It doesn't, there's no report of anybody or anything stolen. So it is sad and sickening. And like I said last week, what is the biggest concern of the Nigerian government? What is the biggest and what is the thing that has gotten the Nigerian government to take immediate action in the last one week? It's Twitter. That has, that, that's the thing that has gotten the Nigerian government to take immediate action, to call an immediate press conference, to or give immediate orders. The president has been giving orders to the chief of army staff, have been giving orders to the inspector general of police for six years now. Yeah, there's been a new report every other week saying, you know, he has been given, he has given marching orders. He has, you know, asked that the chief of army staff or the IG of police, you know, immediately start, goes to work and all of that. Six mm -hmm. years and yet we still, you know, will wake up, you know, on Thursday and report very likely that there's, there's more killings here or there. So it's, it makes me sick. You know, to be honest, and there's no, there's no nice way to put this or to talk about this, you know, and act like we are not, we are not normal. Wherever you are in the country, wherever you are, you know, in, in Nigeria today, wherever your office is, if you're working from home, if you, you know, are going out on a Friday night, mm -hmm. living life and enjoying your money and doing all of that, you do not live in a normal, in a normal country. And there's no other way to, to describe this. I, We're also going to talk about Lagos, I guess. Yes, the, the, you know, still talking about this abnormality of just how bad security ha has deteriorated in the country. We're talking about daylight robberies on the roads in Lagos State. You know, we've been seeing this in recent time, especially this year. You know, it really, it really took a took a spike because we know that as far back as February, it, the police were saying, you know, they arrested about a hundred robbers on the roads, this and that. Now people have been sharing their experiences. People saying they were robbed at a co a co bridge. People saying they were robbed at this particular major road. You no know, people sharing the videos on Twitter as to you know what happened, what transpired. I mean, that's a video that you're seeing um, somebody who was allegedly you know robbed. It's it's just it's just crazy that yeah. that people now become so emboldened to go on the roads in traffic. Just vehicles are stopped already. They pull out a gun, whatever you know, arm that that, that they're with, and they dispossess you of your property. Another one we've been hearing and we've talked about here on The Breakfast is people just snatching people off the roads, putting them in vans and asking them for money. Yeah. You know, I heard of a, of, of one that at a Bafemi Awolowo way, this woman was. You know, she was accosted, she was asked for her ATM, her money was withdrawn, her ATM card, her money was withdrawn. And they even actually wanted to take her to say, call your family members, let them bring money. And, you know, she was smart enough to say, oh, she's the breadwinner of the family. She actually gives money to people. She has just 60,000. And that's how she was able to escape. But, you know, people are experiencing robberies on the roads. And it, it makes us wonder what really are the police, police operatives doing. You see, this thing really pains me whenever I see it on the road. Just drive through, the, through Lagos Island. You will see at some certain junctions, police vans that have totally broken down. Either their tires are bad, but these vehicles never walk, they never move. They're just broken down there. Policemen just take their, just stay there to take shelter. So if there's a robbery, how do you quickly mobilize to, 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 to save the day? What well, really are security agencies doing about that? Well, um, you know, these you know, are things that you would see when you have the level of unemployment in Nigeria today. Um, it's not going to be shocking when you know, these persons who are unemployed take to crime. Uh, when you have the level of unemployment, you know, uh, that we currently are dealing with, and at the same time, a uh, security system, a security network, inf security, security infrastructure that seems to have completely um, um, failed. Um, that's what you see. Uh, is Lagos policed enough? Obviously not. There's not enough of these police officers on the streets. And even when they were there, they were, you know, robbing people, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and um, 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 accusing them of, of wearing... Uh, dreadlocks or driving bends and, and you know ho carrying laptop that's what they were doing until that eventually stopped even if there's reports that it might be coming back but um, it's it's no shock it's no surprise you know that there is this number of jobless people who drive 
anywhere, you know, head to the mainland now, you would be driving with your heart on, you know, in, in your mouth because you are worried. You know, what happens if you get stuck in traffic? I was on my way back from Ikotun yesterday um, after covering the uh, TB Joshua uh, story. Um, and, you know, while we were driving, there was traffic on, you know, on the other lane. And mm. the uh, Uber driver told me, you know, that is, you know, a, 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 you're, you're a, a sitting you know, dock, I don't know how they say it. Yes. But basically, Target as long as you're stuck in that bait. traffic, your, you know, the chances of you getting robbed in broad daylight increases, you know, to very, very high uh, levels. He also shared a story about, you know, uh, uh, another Uber driver who was shot um, while they were trying to get his phone. He, he lost his two eyes. So um, that's, you know, what exactly Lagos kind, kind of looks like now. And it's sad. But what needs to be done? Is it a hundred, arresting 100, you know, like you said, or is it fixing the level of unemployment in the streets? Is it fixing the, um, the level of hunger in Nigeria today? You can't, yes, if you commit a crime, you should be prosecuted, you should go to jail. But when, you know, you have this level of unemployment, what do you blame? At the end of the end, SARS protests, it, what happened there was just to show a very clear picture of the level of unemployment that exists in our beautiful Lagos that we like to, you know, describe as, you know, the, you know, most developed city in West Africa <laughs> and some of all those English that we use. Um, that's, you know, the, 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 a very clear picture of what it is like. So, yes, Lagosians need to be more safe. Um, you need to plan your, your, your outings better. You need to be sure that wherever you're going, you are extremely safety conscious um, in every way possible. You can never tell when it might happen to you. Um, do we have enough security agents on the streets to ensure that these criminals are caught? Absolutely not. And that's the, the honest truth. We don't. Um, yes, you, you mentioned that they are positioned at certain junctions, which is normal. They should, they should be there. But the, the vehicles that you, you know, said that, that they uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, are, in, are broken down. So if there is an emergency situation, who do you call? Does the RRS number work when there's robberies going on on Costa? I told you how I tried um, the number when I saw an accident. You know, it never went through. Yeah. Do those numbers work? Do police emergency numbers work in Lagos? If you if you get in an emergency on the road, if there's robberies going on on any bridge in Lagos now and you call the police, are you sure? Are you confident that they will be there in seconds? With the level of traffic in Lagos, they can't even get to you um, in the first place. So it's um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, but it's a very clear picture of where we are with regards to security, police infrastructure, criminal justice system, and the level of unemployment that we currently are dealing with as a country. And that, of course, goes up, you know, back to where we're, we're coming from, and that is the, the killings in Igongo and, uh, and in Kebi State. Last weekend, we spoke about 52 in Eboi. This weekend, we're talking about 100 in two different states. Mm -hmm. um, next weekend, what would the figures be? And what exactly bothers the Nigerian government the most? The president and the presidency, as they've you know, tried to dis you know, distinguish between both, both of them, uh, as we, we've been hearing lately. What exactly um, bothers them the most? Is it the death of Nigerians? Is it the loss of lives in these numbers? It doesn't seem so. Sadly, it doesn't seem so. I remember, you know, back then, the level of outrage that you know Nigerians used to have in, in previous governments when this kind of things happened, yes. the outrage was intense, and they had said, "Oh, you know, this government is completely useless." And I believe that Nigerians at that point thought, "Oh, you know, let's you know make a change so that we can do something better." And the government came into into office with these promises, so many of these promises, and now wouldn't even address the country in years. President Muhammadu Buhari wouldn't even bother himself enough to say, let me speak to the press. 88 Nigerians lost their lives. I need to speak with Nigerians and assure them that we have this under control. 20 Nigerians lost their lives in, in, in or your state. I need to speak with the, 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 the people of the state. Or Shema can they put out a statement. The president himself, doesn't he feel like maybe when things like this happen, I need to speak with Nigerians and assure them that we are on top of the situation and those people will be caught. We don't even get that from our president. What we get is a, uh, a very likely a, a statement from, like, if we're lucky, we get a statement from any of the presidential aides um, or spokespersons, and that's where it ends, until the next disaster happens. Nigeria doesn't have earthquakes, doesn't have landslides, doesn't have any of those natural disasters that you hear in other countries. There's no tsunamis going on here. We, as a country, <laughs> are the ones killing ourselves. It is Nigerians, or foreigners, like they've you know, also said, Killing Nigerians in their hundreds. Would we get to a point at the end of this administration, sometime in the future, that we will be honestly be able to calculate the number of lives that have been lost in the last five years in the most gruesome, sad, heartbreaking way? Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll you know, decide to have another Oputa panel. 
Um, I don't know. But, you know, moral of the story is um, it, it doesn't seem like we're in a normal place. Um, um, we are not in any way in a sane society, regardless of how good your suit looks this morning or how, you know, beautiful your home, you know, is as, as it stands with your wife and your beautiful kids and all of that. Nigeria is not, is not working as it stands, but we'll take a short break when we come back. Let's get uh, to the papers this morning and see what major stories uh, are making headlines across Nigeria today. We'll be back. <laughs> 